Okay, so defending hope for uh, hope in humanity. That right? That was that was my prompt. Yeah, generally, uh, just wanted to see how you'd attack the issue. Uh, do you do you have a lack of hope uh, for humanity? No, but my impression, uh, I have not done enough research. I don't think of anarchism seems to contradict itself at a couple points but this is one of them in fact it's reliant entirely this is an accusation that we have to field from the communists all the time because they misuse and misconstrue this terminology um because most of them lack a political science education but we are accused of being idealists now in a strictest political science sense we are idealists in fact um, we are an idealist ideology, but for the colloquial usage of idealism, we also are idealists. Um, yeah, absolutely. You, you see what I, what I did. I made an appeal to the group and it's only be through respect for each other that their change will be made. I like the reality of it is within anarchistic circles, groups, um, organizations, it's because you respect each other. It's because you can work, work with each other. It's because that you can have those, those lines of communication open that things actually happen. And I mean, it's a cliched example that I use all the time, but Food Not Bombs is feeding people on a global scale in 100 plus countries simultaneously as we speak. And there's no organ, there's no like international organizational structure. It's all just happening. There are people being fed in 100 plus countries out of the goodness of people's hearts, organized completely anarchistically. Absolutely. Um- the specific hang-up that I had gotten from, I'd say probably some less well-versed members of the community, uh, was that because anarchists so heavily eh, critique society, which I, is a good thing, I think, it does seem like some people think that society itself is bad, which is a view that exists, but that seems to contradict the fact that humans, like you said earlier, are social creatures and also flawed creatures. So we can't really exist without society, but that isn't the vibe I'm getting from you. Could you delineate more from that? There are nihilists amongst every group throughout society and there are hyper individualists amongst every group in society um there's there's always going to be representatives that identify or identify themselves within an ideological spread that are going to present opinions that will be either antithetical to or interpreted by uh, others in a manner that is probably contradictory to the underlying presuppositions within the ideology itself. So you have right. you have anarcho primitivists, which organize anarchistically, and unfortunately, we have to call them our they are they are of us, um, just due to how they organize themselves. They are anarchist anarchistically organized, but their primitivist nature is so antithetical to the fundamentals of anarchism uh, as it's understood in within most spheres of anarchism that it is it's seemingly self-contradictory um but they sort of get a pass right so you have anarcho nihilism which again seemingly gets a pass because of the fact that Anarchism is more than one thing. Anarchism, in the words of Emma, uh, Emma Goldman, in the words of Emma, is a network of ideas, and we much prefer it that way. So once you come to terms, once you come to grips with the fact that there is no one school of anarchism, 
that there is as many sort of strains as there are people practicing, that it is a tool belt full of tools and uh, tools of analyses, of organization, of methodologies, of interaction, of communication, right? That it's many, many things that fall within the sphere that we recognize as anarchism. That means that a lot of people can pick up one of our hammers and build something that not necessarily we would be too happy with. Um, yeah. But that is the reality of anarchism. But once you sort of come to terms with, <clears throat> let's say, the analytical, ethical underpinnings of anarchism and the Foucaultian power dynamics that underpin much of the sort of how you are sort of how you should be looking at how you relate with others and how others relate with you and within that sphere of organizational power dynamics, then what you start to very quickly realize is that <clears throat> it, there's, there's nothing, you can have nothing but hope because if I don't believe that I can have a realistic conversation with a person and actually communicate my point and communicate my idea and that I can't on some degree grasp what their re reiterative point is or what their, you know, contrapoint is, then I don't know what I'm doing. Like just okay. just in existence at that point, right? Like what 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 are we doing? How is anything happening? Right? Like the fact that we were able to build the internet means there's hope within anarchism. Like that's right. the, that's the reality of it. The fact that anarchists feed people on a global scale, the fact that Trumbleplex, which is a organiz is a, a collective operating outside Detroit that's been there for fucking 30 years, that went through the collapse of Detroit, Michigan, and they have their own artist space, they have their own internet connection, they have their own housing, they have their own food, they have their own library, and they've been able to interface successfully with neoliberal capitalism as it collapses around them means there's hope. Right. The, like there, there's there's all of these things that like I point I would point to that are nothing but filled with hope when you understand and embrace and sort of operate within an anarchistic, anarchistically informed mindset. So if I'm understanding your nuanced view, your specific um, ideations on this topic. It is more similar to critiquing society is one of the most important things we can do, but we, you are generally not anti-society or anti-collective. Because, yeah, that's stupid. Um, yeah. Anarchism, again, anarchos, without rulers, intrinsically implies that there would be people to be ruled, right? It, it, it literally implies there is a group. Yeah. And that is, that is the delineation from, say, Marxism, which is still no, no rulers, but even further, no leaders. Oh, no, they're full of shit. Which, yeah. Um, hold on, hold on. We're gonna do the thing. We're gonna do the thing. Um, yeah, there we go. Oh. So, do you know about Bakunin and Marx? Uh, no. I don't think so. Okay. Uh, actually sounds familiar. Okay, cool. Um, so, Bakunin was an infamous anarchist. Marx is, of course, Marx. And... The relationship between Bakunin and Marx is why anarchists were disinvited from the first international and not invited to the second international. They fought like high school mean girls, right? They like legitimately 
it was the stuff of it's the stuff of legend all right um and so what i'm gonna do is read you a little passage by bakunin about communism and marxism <laughs> and like do you yeah do you know what the first international is and the second international yeah okay cool you fucking somebody yeah okay um <clears throat> so here's here's bakunin on the whole thing right and this is this is important like this is an under important distinction that anarchists need you to understand when talking about communism and marxism and socialism right like this is this is fundamental to the difference marx is an authoritarian and centralizing communist he wants what we want the complete triumph of economic and social equality, but he wants it in the state and through the state power, through the dictatorship of a very strong and, so to say, despotic provisional government, that is, the negation of liberty. His economic ideal is the state as sole owner of land and of all kinds of capital, cultivating the land under the management of state engineers and controlling all industrial and commercial associations with state capital. We want the same triumph of economic and social equality through the abolition of the state and all that passes by the name of law, which in our view is the permanent negation of human rights. We want the reconstruction of society and the unification of mankind to be, be achieved, not from, the, uh, from above downward by any sort of authority, nor by socialist officials, engineers, and other accredited men of learning, but from below upwards by the free federation of all kinds of workers' associations and peoples liberated from the yoke of the state. So you understand that? Yeah. That's, that's the distinction. Is, is like, okay, you say you want to free the people from the state and from ruling classes. How are you going to achieve that? We're going to empower the state and empower ruling classes. That's like, yeah. that's like healing the bullet wound in your foot by shooting your foot. That makes no fucking sense. It just makes no sense. None. So for an anarchist, that's, that's what we contend with on that other side is it's like, Okay, so you want to achieve communism, right? You want you want a classless, stateless, moneyless society, right? That's your goal? Cool. You can get communism. The only way you can get communism, though, is through anarchism. Because you can't so, get communism through communism. Yeah, what I... Another thing that I've, I wanted to bring up was... I don't think anyone can realistically believe in utopia or true communism just by the merits of human nature because we are flawed, which is a thing that is true, and it would have to be a perfect society, which can't exist if we exist. That's a self-defeating ideology, though. Yeah, absolutely. No, 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 not it. You. Sure. So, so, one, anarchists aren't utopic, so we know. We aren't utopic. Um, we actually have to plan for all sorts of eventualities and failings, and that's one of the things that differentiates, like, anarchistic organize, organizational modalities from, say, capitalist modalities, is that we plan for the worst of our behaviors. We don't take advantage of them. We don't utilize greed to drive the economy. We, ca we account for greed and ensure that we, uh, we, uh, we have plans and procedures and modalities to mitigate or moderate that human impulse, right? So there's a distinction in how we approach those sorts of failings of humanity. Um, but also... It's self-defeating as an attitude just because, to put it more succinctly, don't let the perfect be the enemy of progress, right? You will never achieve perfection as humanity, 
but can't you do better than what we're doing now? Yeah, absolutely. So why don't you shoot for something better? And even if you fall short, at least you got better. Right. And fun fact. Contextualization. So you're you're clearly trying to come to terms with anarchism. Here's what a lot of <clears throat> chat, if you want to reword this for me, feel free, but I'm just going to, I'm going to drop this as best I can with as little ego as I can include in this statement. You're probably not going to encounter many people uh, in your lifetime that are going to be better educated on this topic and better experienced on this topic than me. Um, and it's, it's difficult to say something like that and be like, Hey, just so you know, I kind of am an expert in this field. Um, but yeah. like, it sounds douchey to say out loud. Um, <laughs> so just with that caveat applied, most people, <laughs> most people don't understand anarchism. <laughs> They, I totally agree. Um, anarchism happens not at some, na like, it doesn't happen at this, like, national, revolutionary meta-narrative that many leftists find themselves self-obsessed self with. You'll find many people within leftist spaces, people who identify as anarchists on fucking Twitter, communists, fucking the whole lot of them, right? The, just the spectrum that become, and thank, thank you for the fucking, <laughs> in chat. Um, they're, they become obsessed with a, a leftist meta narrative that is born of an obsession of the French Revolution. And as a result, they, um, <laughs> um, they ultimately find themselves looking for a temporal signpost, a singular event. Um, that is a, like a signpost in the road where they go, that's the revolution, right? And that's not how things like this work. Anarchism happens both big and small, but most notably small. Anarchism, people have questions like, well, what if, like, what would be your ideal, and they always use words like nation or state or country, right? What, what if anarchism succeeded, right? What would you be, and they don't understand that, like, anarchism is already happening. It never did not happen. When you can correctly understand what anarchism is and how it operates, then you see it. You see it happening in all of these micro-revolutionary acts. You see it in organizational structures. You see it happening on a global scale. You, have it, you see it happening interpersonally. You see it happening at the macro to some degree or another. It's already happening. Now, can we make it happen more? Yes. Is it better when it happens more? Yes. But ultimately, it's already succeeded because anarchism is not a thing... It's not only a thing that we strive towards, it's a thing that we intrinsically understand and do as humans. And so it's this sort of mixed bag of fundamental human behaviors, preferred interaction methods, uh, like an actual understanding of like the classical sense of a golden rule. Right, All of these things tie into and play into these power dynamics that anarchists use as a, foundational, uh, as a foundation to ethical analyses, to organizational modalities that you can then look at a structure within society or look at some people and go, oh, here's what's wrong with that. That's why historically and contemporarily, anarchists are almost universally on the right side of history. It's one of the things that makes you actually proud to be an anarchist, to count yourselves amongst the ranks, 
is because if you look at civil rights, there's anarchists there. If you look at feminine, you know, suffrage, there's anarchists there. If you look at indigenous water fights, there's anarchists there. If you look at cap- anti-capitalist issues, there's anarchists there. If you look at, if you look at, if you look at, we're always on the right side of history on these sorts of things. Because, not because we're like magic, not because we're special, but just because it's pretty simple once you grasp these tools and you go, oh, that guy's trying to own that person. That's fucked. Well, what about the social, yeah. what about the social norms? Yeah, those don't apply to me. Yeah, I don't care. Like, that's bullshit. You, that's made up bullshit. That's made up bullshit. Right. Like, that's, right. It's, so once, once all of those veils get pulled away and you're left with that sort of raw data and those tools of analysis and those modes of organizational structure, you can very easily and very simply fall back on that and go, yeah, Israel's fucking the Palestinians. Easy. Yeah. Easy, easy call. Yeah. It's like you choose, you can essentially choose for yourself what parts of, I guess, society. Society is the wrong word here, but what parts of the social norm are fine, and then you personally can identify both objectively and subjectively because it's you. What needs to change? Yeah. Right? <laughs> yes. And ultimately, what that leads to is you start creating affinity groups. You start surrounding yourself with people who feel that way too. That, that's the reality. Yeah, can, yeah. And so congratulations, you're building an anarchistic net, network already. And if in that network, you know, you're like, look, let's do some things. And like, I can handle these tasks. And does anybody want to have this and that? And like, you just sort of spread this stuff out and you figure it out organically. And you guys are like balancing all this stuff and you start feeding people or like you do collecting water, doing resources, like, congratulations, you've now created an anarchistically organized mutual aid network. Yeah, and that's kind of, the, that. to me, it seems like that's kind of the strength of the anarchistic groups in general. There aren't so many hard, fast rules, and you can disagree on things and still exist in the same space and learn, which is fucking amazing you know what so like it's it's a very resilient sort of thing um and if one is properly either experienced in the street i've never made any bones about this um i much prefer an anarchist who does some shit and then learns theory. I, I, I am distrustful of the theory then does shit. Um, I'm, I would much prefer somebody who had the, the impulse to go do something, whether that was protest, whether that was ch- like feeding people, uh, that person already intrinsically and empathetically understands what I need them to understand about anarchism. And then the rest, I can teach them. They can learn that. That's easy. But teaching somebody the things that you're going to feel can't really be done. I need you to feel what it feels like when that person looks you in the eyes and they haven't eaten for two, three days. And they look dead into your fucking soul and thank you for that food. That's a real feeling. You need to know what that feels like. I need you to know what it feels like to kick a tear gas canister back. I need you to know what it feels like to pick a comrade in arms up while they're bleeding or fucking tie a tourniquet, right? Like these, these are the sorts of things that I need you to feel that no amount of reading will ever be able to teach you. Once you, once you have that experiential data, 
oh, well, I can, yeah, the theory is no problem. The theory is no problem. But the real world stuff that goes along with it, because you don't get to call yourself an anarchist if all you did was read some stuff and now you call yourself an anarchist. Anarchism right. is a anarchistic praxis, right? Praxis is theory put into action and then reflected upon and cycled again, right? You, you, you know some stuff, you do some stuff, and you figure out how to do that stuff better next time, and then you do it again, and you repeat ad infinitum. The important part in that is doing stuff. Hence the making sandwiches. Go make fucking sandwiches. That's what anarchism is. It's making sandwiches. There's a lot of stuff we have. Do we can we can help you set up your fucking five person cooperative coffee cafe that's also a lot a reading space and we can we can help you make it so there's like no manager who's in charge of hiring and firing and all of that is done democratically in the organization. We can make all of that happen too. We can teach you consensus decision making. But if you want to call yourself an anarchist, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to feed somebody. You're going to have to do something. That's the important part. And so, like, that's why I much prefer people come at it from the other direction. Because then they already know. They already know. They know the thing I need them to know. They know why it's important. Because they've already been there and they have that data. And it's never going to leave them. It isn't. Once you save somebody's life, once you feed somebody who's, who's hungry, truly hungry, that, just, that shit just sticks with you. That's just, you're forever different now. So, like, yeah, that's the, um, the important part of anarchism. Anarchists feed people. It's one of the most common things you will find anarchists doing. If you want to find an anarchist, there's two things that you can look for street medics and soup kitchens. You will find anarchists in both of those spaces guaranteed. That's what we do. We're the ones who are trying to heal society. It's in no, in no way, shape or form. Am I under any delusions or illusions here? I have a thing. It's even on a bingo card for the community. It, Mark them if you got them. Um, I'm a torchbearer. Do I think there will be widespread adoption of anarchistic ideals in my lifetime? Fuck no. Dude, neoliberal capitalism won the game. Are you fucking kidding me? They're riding this out for a little bit. Shit's got to collapse underneath them for this shit to actually foment and change. But... Anarchism existed before me, it exists during me, and it will exist after me. All I'm doing is passing this torch to future generations and making sure that as many people that I can have that torch at their disposal. Because the day will come when they need to light the way. Right. So, I guess a natural follow-up question... I could sit here and defend actions that may or may not have been good enough. I definitely haven't done as much as you. That is not an ego thing. You prefer it coming from the other side. But it can come from this side, being introduced absolutely. here and then yeah. going out and doing it. Coming yeah, ab back, yeah, absolutely. Um, the trust is just harder earned that direction. That's all. And that 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 is... <clears throat> that's a uh, part of uh anarchist opsec um operational security we we trust people who have skin in the game more than we trust people who don't and right. that's just the reality of it <laughs> and what was that yeah, that's just how things work. That's exactly how you earn trust. Yeah, exactly. 
Um, because it's usually commies in hiding. That is very true, actually. Um, yeah, it's it's more often commies than feds. Um, <laughs> look, the reality of that is uh, communists have killed more anarchists historically than capitalists have. Now, if we want to talk about just general like capitalist decline, killing people through lack of access to healthcare, but like for, as far as like full on they round us up shoot us and execute us and shit oh yeah the communists killed way more anarchists than the capitalists have we have we have history and we don't trust them yeah so they're welcome to serve soup next to us but the minute one of those motherfuckers says i have an idea let's fuck it you just like shut up just keep serving <laughs> they're they're not to be put in charge of anything <laughs> Uh, right so like I, like i said they are centralizing authoritarians the anarchist critique of communism is the same same critique of capitalism it's authoritarianism i don't care really at the end of the day how you organize your your economic structure you can you can bring equity and equality to just about any economic distribution if you if you approach it fairly and with equity and equality right you can you can organize that humanely really any direction if you're not psychotic right the problem is authoritarianism the problem is a hierarchical system in which people placed above other people somehow are the recipients of more power more resources more wealth more respect like how the fuck does that work how is that ever gonna work as a system that's fucked stalin and his fucking crew and the state officials were placed above the the proletariat in stalinistic russia they were absolutely more important and they got more resources and they got more protection, right? Than some fucking grubby uh, land uh, dirt farmer. So, yeah, I, I mean, I've made the argument that it's always been and probably will always be the same problem. The problem is oligarchs. I, I would challenge, right. I would challenge you. To find a society in which the rich and powerful did not control things. Fair. Because you can find pieces of certain groups. You can find really good points, but there is always someone in power most of pretty if there is a in a large group that is generally led by someone powerful, yeah. You can find good things, but it's not going to work out because, you know, there's someone put into power. Mm -hmm. and, and Lord Acton rule dictates power corrupts. Power tends to corrupt is the actual quote. Power tends to corrupt. Absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. Right. Like that's the reality of it. So why don't you build a system that takes that into account which is what anarchism attempts to do does it fail yeah all things fail but it does a hell of a lot better job at addressing those topics than communism than capitalism than fucking feudalism than 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 that right at least it goes hey there's these problems and maybe rather than trying to like benefit from them we, we put some like limiters and controls on them and try and like balance some of that shit out. That way you don't end up with like just mad psychotic kings. Right. Seems a more reasonable yeah. approach. You, oh my goodness. So when you asked the original question of giving the best example of a society, I had a really dumb answer. It is one of those places where you can find a lot of good things, but again, there is a king. Um, I specifically just brushed up, brushed up on this in my free time. Uh, like, if you look at Hawaii before 
the shit went down and it got annexed illegally. No, not the UK, chat. What the fuck? No, but Hawaii has a lot of good things. Like, a whole lot of good shit. But, it, yeah, there was still, like, a whole thing where there was a person in power, and that person did sign a sign the illegal treaty for the annexation, I guess. So that is that is just a failing. So one person was able to functionally nullify the land rights of an entire populace. That's, yeah. That seems like a, a pretty critical uh, flaw in the system. Exactly. And, like, you can say a whole bunch about it. Like, yeah, they were one of the most literate nations in the world. They had electricity before White House, all of that. But it took less than a decade for all of that to kind of go away. Uh, and I'm also being told they had some pretty strict taboos as well. Uh, oh, yeah. So... Just saying. Yeah, good parts, but yeah, it's going to fail harder than one would hope. Yeah, and I mean, so are you familiar with like, oh, just some fundamentals of cybernetics theory? Like, because I called the uh, communist centralized authoritarians, right? So do you know like the distinctions between um, centralized, decentralized, and distributed? Okay, I thought you were going in an entirely different direction and going to talk about fucking biohackers, but no, no in C- cyber cybernetic theory or cybernetics is a uh, like it's it's a, it's a uh, it's a study of circular feedback systems, but it um, it encapsulates like ecology, biology, cognitive, social sciences, um, like yeah, it has to do with like systems management. Um, yeah, not specifically there. So thank you for not. Yeah. Um, so basically, um, centralized is pretty self-explanatory. Just imagine a, um, a network of stuff and everything connects to the center node, right? What, what happens if we pull out that center node? Nothing's connected to anything anymore, right? Right. That's just, that's just a broken system. Um, oh wait, you're uh, you were still you you like um, hold on. You uh, you saw chat, so that's why I was like, oh hold on, he can actually see stream. Um, oh, yeah, I'm just yeah, sorry. <laughs> so, so no 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 that that helps me. I can just here I can just put this on screen for you. This is the difference between a centralized, a decentralized, and a distributed network. So. Imagine as far as like electronics go, right? You have one server and everybody connects to it and the server goes down and you're fucked, right? Over here in decentralized, you have like the East Coast server, uh, like the Northeast server, uh, the Northeast server, the, the, the sort of sa- central server, the Southeast server, you got the West, you know, uh, Southwest, Central West and Northwest servers, right? So like, okay, so if the Northeast server goes down, all those fuckers in Maine and New Hampshire and and Vermont and Connecticut, they're all down, but everybody else is still talking to each other, right? Cool, right? A little more resiliency, right? But still some very fundamental points. And if anything happens to these, the, the decentralized nodes, then everybody in the ring basically goes down. D, a distributed network is every everything connects to everything else through multiple node, uh, multiple routes. So it doesn't matter if this primary node over here that like is a repository for a bunch of stuff goes down. There's routes in and out to everyone from everything. You can still find your way down and over and over and around and that sort of thing. It's a super resilient network format, right? Now this can be applied to IT, but fun fact, it can be applied to lots of things, including biological systems and social networks. So, right. Centralized network, you have a king. 
one failing at that king, as you've already utilized uh, as an example, say Hawaii, one failure point and everybody else is affected. Super, super fucked up system, right? Then you have a, de a, de a decentralized network. Okay, so there's not a king in the U.S. There's, you know, there's a Supreme Court, there's a legislature, you've got your executive branch, there's other, you know, there's other hubs of power. But those hubs of power all talk to each other and are the control points for everybody else. Right. Then you have something akin to how anarchists would organize things. Where you have equity, equality through a heterarchical uh, structure. So you've been taught hierarchy. Did you know there was an, uh, a, a, an, a polar opposite or antithetical term to hierarchy? It's, he I did actually. it's heterarchy. And so you can horizontally define a network rather than vertically. And so that everybody exists on the same planar value. So a pyramid scheme. What? It's the anti-pyramid scheme. It is the anti-pyramid scheme. Yes. Um, so we would organize things through a distributed network topology where everybody has a participatory and contributory and re uh, receptive um, value within the network or within society and have equality of dissent and consent within that society. Rather than being governed by these positions of power and rather than be governed by this singular position of power, these, uh, these nodes that you see here can be seen as delegative, uh, uh, delegative structures. So not every person needs to participate in every single activity in a anarchist or distributed society uh, structure. You can absolutely delegate activities to other peoples and other groups, and you can reclaim that power at a moment's notice if it's constructed correctly. Rather than having our bullshit representative system, you can have a delegative system that is, the, that is comprised of the cumulative votes or power of the people who uh, utilized them or that committee as a delegate. And those people could just simply retract their vote or recall that individual. So you as a delegate for a group of 120 people are voting for those 120 people. But if 50 of those 120 people decide they don't agree with you, they can just pull their vote away from you and vote for themselves and swing that vote if they want. There's absolutely other ways to organize these structures and engage with them mathematically, organizationally, uh, and topologically, which is what we're discussing here is the topology, um, that, would in, that would include a greater degree of equality and equity for the participants of that system. This is, this is sort of what anarchists specialize in when you get to the nerd level of it. <clears throat> Most people know us by black block, right? Most people <laughs> know us through very distinct popular media popularized actions, but the reality of it is when you really get into it, uh, anarchists are nerds for organizing stuff. Yeah, I get you. I get the idea there. So, yeah, there's there's other ways to do this stuff. And part of part of what we do is uh sorry old timers, you know the deal, you know the deal. Um <clears throat> part of what we do as a society, um I nerds that like to throw bricks. Yeah. <laughs> um Part of what we do as society is, uh, I wrote up in a piece called The uh, Tent Poles. Um, it's got a longer title and name, but it's The Tent Poles. Um, there's three tent poles to, oppression, to American oppression. And one of them is the poverty of philosophy. There's answers to the questions. You just weren't taught the answers, that's all. Intentionally, you were given misinformation and disinformation and refused the information because the master will not provide you the tools to free yourself. That's not how that works. 
And so nobody's going to explain to you in a state-run school the failings of state. No one's in a capitalist society going to explain to you the failings of capitalism. The same goes true for communism, right? In Soviet Russia, they're not going to tell you that the state is shit and communism is a failing ideology as well due to these reasons, right? That's just the reality of that situation. And so you were denied access to information for alternative modes of thought. And as a result of that, there's preconceptions, there's misinformation, there's, you know, just a lack of, there's just a dead space for some things. Like, I don't I didn't know that that could even be done that way sometimes. Um, and so that's a very important step. Uh, in in how a state maintains their power is denying you access to the information that would undermine their claims to credibility and authority. Right. Okay, so I guess I... Sorry, lots of questions. Um, so... If, hmm, how to phrase this, so essentially you are a expert on this topic, you got to be that expert through, I assume, college, like you studied shit? I mean, my degree was in management of information systems, which helps me on a certain level um uh, right. of this, but my expertise in no way, shape, or form was taught to me by a college. But that leads to the question, I don't, this feels a little personal, but I, other than the basics, like, say, feeding, uh, feeding people, uh, donating extra money, like, things you can do immediately, it's, it's not amoral or bad to pursue something that you think you'd be good at in pursuance to these goals, like, Specifically, um, if I'm using myself as an example, I really want to get into union work. So the first is I really need to get a degree, and that is the start of it. Okay. And that is not – that's not a – that's not in action, right? That is still working towards the goal oh. because – One, one, one. Okay, one, uh, there's, I don't even know where it's at. One, there's no ethical consumption under capitalism. So you have to, you have to contend with a certain degree of blood on your hands, for lack of a better phrasing, uh, no matter what you're going to do. No matter what you do, you are going to, you, you're going to murder a, a small Chinese kid in a, in a, fa a chip factory, right? That's going to happen. Part of that's on you. Deal with it. Um, there's no ethical consumption under capitalism. Two, you don't necessarily need the degree for union work, but I don't know what you're pursuing, so that's neither here nor there. Um, and three, get yourself situated. There's a reason that we tell people to um, put the mask on themselves before they put it on their kid in the, uh, in the uh, airplane. There's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. Take care of yourself because if you're not in a place where you can help others it, because you can't help yourself, what good are you? Right? Like that, that's you, like, we need you, we need as many people to be situated and secure as possible. That way they can help others and that you can communicate these ideas that you can contribute in these ways that you can actively engage in your community, that you can build these affinity networks, that you can attempt to uh, persuade and dissuade your, your local community and your affinity groups from things to towards things that you can change and affect the culture of your community. Yeah. Get yourself squared away. Yeah. And so I guess, a hang-up point for me is is attempting to move through the bureaucracy and try and work within that is that against 
I don't know. Is that wrong? Like, if some can be made with some of the systems in place, some of the organized nonprofits that I follow seem to have very similar goals and ideals, just with, I guess, less of a. I guess the organization is a little, but they seem to be doing good things as well. Okay, and? So is it is it wrong to try and go through the systems in place while still working against them? Is no. The thing? No, I, look, I'm literally going to tell you to vote. There's a dude, I, there's a lot of fucking anarchists and people with credentials like Emma Goldman who would fight me on this one. But I'm going to tell you to fucking even vote like, OK, federal elections don't fucking matter on that low scale. Also, like vote against Trump like this. This one matters. But like on that fucking scale, like, but you know what? Your city council makes a lot of fucking decisions and your vote at the local level means a lot. Your your mayor that, makes a lot of fucking decisions, and if you can make sure that a guy isn't in your way for setting up a soup kitchen for people who are in need, if you can make sure that the city council's not going to be busting up homeless encampments in the dead of winter by do, fucking voting one day a year or maybe campaigning some some shit, and like you can absolutely manipulate and utilize statist systems for the betterment of anarchistically minded causes the whole way through. Yeah. And I recent I not super recently, but it has been brought to my attention that a lot of small semi semi thankless positions in government say local boards, bureaus, whatever, are run unopposed. So, I mean, it feels like getting into the bureaucracy could, per, could keep that person who no one actually wants in that position to just get them out of the way. Here's, he, he, make, make yes, better. yes. Now, let me, let me add a caveat for this. You're 20, you said? Uh, almost. No, oh, okay, 19. Hey, Imperial! <laughs> you're, you're not the only 19-year-old. Um, here's, here's where I would, I would counsel you as somebody who's been around for a few decades. Um, there's a quote that one need heed. Um, it's not you that'll change the system. It's the system that'll change you. You're going to have to compromise to participate. And you're going to have yeah. to find where you are comfortable compromising to and where you cannot compromise because ultimately that compromise undermines who you are and what you stand for and what you're fighting for. And that is a very dynamic thing. And you're going to have to figure that out and figuring that out at 19 or 20 or 21 or 25 even is, is a very, very difficult thing. <laughs> you don't have the lived experience necessarily to be able to understand exactly the tendrils that may be the tentacles that may be at work, how far they go, who they attach to and exactly how fucked up they may be. Um, and a lot of that just comes with age and experience. Like it just is. Um, so you may be made to, or put in a position where you feel you have to make compromises in some of those positions that, actually are working against your greater ideal. And then you have to engage in some very cold, calculated political calculus at that point. 
and you have to make a decision as to whether that one does serve the greater good or whether it undermines your cause or you. Can you live with it? Can the people who are going to know about you doing this live with it? There's a lot of variables and factors that are going to come into play. And this happens moment to moment, day after day, year after year, when you do put yourself into one of those positions. Now, with those massive caveats and asterisks uh, applied to this, this statement, do I think that this is a viable thing? Yes, I absolutely advocate for a more Machiavellian approach, and I use this in the more traditional sense of Machiavellian, not what actually Machiavelli himself self-taught. Very misunderstood philosopher as far as, up there with Nietzsche, as far as like, yeah, people really don't understand this guy. Um, but I do advocate for a more Machiavellian approach within leftist spaces. We tend to have a very low threshold for distaste for doing or disgust for doing things and you kind of sometimes got to get your hands dirty and that's right. just the reality of it um so like this is this is where self-awareness comes into play not every single person is cut out to be a street medic. Not every single person is cut out to be a frontliner and inhale tear gas. Not every single person is cut out to work the kitchen. Right? This is this is where know thyself comes in and you're very young, so knowing thyself is uh, still still in the stages of self-discovery. So you may, you may opt to try that and get into one of those positions and realize you don't have what it takes, that this is not for you and you're going to have to bail on it, right? And bail. Don't, don't fucking put yourself in a situation where you're like, you know, oh, I just, you know, do what you got to do. Um, but not everybody is cut out for every single task and every single job. And that's, again, this is, this comes with the dynamism of anarchism rather than these sort of rigid roles that most societal norms and systems apply. Anarchism recognizes this dynamism and just sort of embraces it, but there is a messiness to it. And so you have to realize that for yourself if you're going to engage in that particular tactic. Do I think that's a viable right. tactic? Yes, I absolutely do. <laughs> I would much prefer people who have <clears throat> um, anarchistic sympathies in positions where they have power to make decisions. Um, there's one person in community in particular, we don't need to name them in chat, guys, that is an unabashed anarcho-syndicalist and is in a very powerful position and has made more impactful decisions that have helped and saved more people on a large scale than anybody else in this community guaranteed just just guaranteed um and by getting into that position to get into that position they had to do some fucking disgusting <laughs> shit frankly like they, they really did. Like they, they are, their degrees are in things that most of us would find. Ugh. And the groups that they have to hang out with and the people that they spend their days with, most of us would want to just do horrible things to. <laughs> like it, they, it's, they absolutely live in a world that most of us in community would find disgusting and distasteful. Yet, because they're, they have the capacity to do that, they've been able to make more changes for the better than any of the rest of us can ever in several lifetimes, probably. So right. that is absolutely a viable tactic, but you need to know yourself. 
you need to go in with both eyes open, both feet on the ground, and know what you're getting into and whether you can handle it. Simple as that. And that's complicated as fuck. Yeah. I don't know. I think the one thing that I know I'm decent at, because, I mean, you know, obviously everyone has privilege of some kind in different areas, but my being brought up by an English teacher and being fully encouraged to be literate and shit, I really believe that people undervalue talking and spreading information because actions definitely speak louder than words, but when you silence people, actions don't fucking happen. So, like, if, if there's not someone like you, both acting and spreading the word, it kind of seems like things don't move forward. So, there's three percentages that I say make up anarchism. Anarchism is 50% education. 49% direct action and 1% take a day off and go vote for fuck's sake. <laughs> Just do it. Just take a day off and go vote. Take, it, there's, there's a very strong strain within anarchism that, that stipulates or maintains that any participation within the, the statist system or structure it provides a legitimization to that system and thus invalidates your position. I counter that with that's fucking woo woo nonsense bullshit and you live under capitalism and live under the state. Are you living on an island? No. Then you're participating in this. Get the fuck over yourself. You might as well elect a mayor to your small town that doesn't want to actively murder homeless people. Pull your head out of your ass. Right? But that is, that is a strain of thought in anarchism. So I have to add that ca caveat to it. Right? Understanding my own people. Um, but it is 50% education. That is the greater number. I take the 1% out of the direct action. Anarchists are first and foremost communicators and educators. It's what we have to be. Just, it, it's just necessary. Hey, that's Dorch. Um, yeah, in a world that doesn't understand what we are in a world that's been misinformed about what we are in a world who's had the ideas necessary to understand what we are stolen from them it requires us to have good communicators amongst our ranks to have grasp of rhetoric to have orative capacity right all of that is a necessity for anarchists. 50% of what we do is education. Yeah. And if one were to focus on that, then inevitably the day will come where you can take action more than the bare minimum. Like, the bare minimum I mean is being a decent person and again, like, making the sandwiches, doing the little things that you can do without much prep, much resources, all that. Mm -hmm. And I think from what you've taught me, you are just about the perfect example of this because, I mean, you, I haven't researched you at all, but from your speech, it does seem like you have committed yourself to the actions as well and done a lot of education and approaching it from one side or the other seems like both valid approaches. Yeah? As long as you do it in good faith and you understand that the action is the, the goal, then, right. then I'm fine with it in the grand scheme of things. 
Will you will you find your way immediately into the back channels and the, the, the talks? No. Um, <laughs> but yes, as far as as far as like counted amongst my brethren, then yeah, absolutely. All right, I think I've got one last question for VC. Oh, before hold, I go you, back to chat. Can you hold on to that question for one second? Yeah, absolutely. I wanted to add to your statement about how you said like doing the bare minimum, like, you know, with what you can, making a sandwich where you can. I would like to point out that the bare minimum is oftentimes recognizing the humanity in another human. Even if you have no change to give, even if you have no food to give, you have no resources to give, taking a moment and saying like, I have 10 minutes, right? I'm going to stop and have a conversation with this person and treat them like just a human being who I'm going to interact with on a, on a human level rather than ignore their gaze, rather than step over or around them. That right there, while I, I, I identify it as the bare minimum, is oftentimes the maximum. Handing a dollar to somebody and then just ignoring their gaze and walking away fast is a douche move. But actually seeing a human being that is more than just a person who's, who's a recipient of something from you seeing that humanity in them and engaging in a dialectical exercise, actually having a back and forth, talking to them about their experiences, seeing them for the person they are before you, that's a huge deal. And that's an important thing to include in your praxis. So I just wanted to like focus on that for a second. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I am a 19 year old working a full time job trying to get back into college. So if that's what I can do, that's what I'll do. Yeah. That's, that's, um, that's a huge deal. Like you probably don't have a lot of experience with the homeless at this point in your life. I'm guessing. Well, suburban living. They are more often than not cast out from society. They are seen as others. They are marginalized. And as a result of this, they're not just like deprived food and housing and like these sorts of like foodstuffs essentials territory, like the material needs, right? They're denied human interaction. To a, to a large extent, They're which tr- is like technically proven to just be so fucking bad for you. Yeah, by name. Yeah, and so that that right there costs you ten minutes. Right, you may not have the money to spend as a broke college student. You may not have the food on you. May not have the socks or shoes. But you know what? If there was, a, and again. Know thyself, know the situation, use a little street smarts. Not every fucking person you walked up to is one gonna talk wanna talk to you, two be recipient, three be mentally stable. These are tenuous circumstances you may find yourself in. Keep your head on a swivel, right? But knowing that, yeah, approach every person as if they're a fucking person and treat them that way. Right? You wouldn't you wouldn't just right. throw a dollar at your friend and fucking walk away coldly. You'd be like, you know, like, yeah, treat them. Like, well, you know. Fair enough. <laughs> um here you go, Steve. Um, yeah, like it, it, so yeah, I just wanted to like put on that. So what was um what was your what was your question? So this sounds sappy and fucking stupid, but it is a genuine question because I originally approached this wanting to learn more about what your deal was here and what I could do. Why did you offer to have a conversation with me? 
because it does not not that you don't seem like the person to do that, but that it is not generally a thing that seems like most people would have the time to do if they have any level of audience. Why invite me to VC? I am a strange experience for me, sorry. <laughs> Nixa, be nice. Um, it's because it's what I do. You, 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 you are of the opinion um, that it doesn't seem like something that I would do, but in fact, it is the very birth of why this community exists, and it is the very it is my raison d'être. The reason this community exists is to literally talk to people. It's to communicate. It's to share ideas. It's to provide a space and a network. The reason you got invited is because one, you came in good faith. Two, I already knew just through Caboose that you were real, but I'll be honest with you. That's not a factor. We invite people who are bad faith. We invite racists. We invite fascists. We invite all sorts of people get invited on the air. But the point is, is that you seem to want to have a conversation. So let's have that conversation. And the easiest way to have that conversation is, is via voice. So right. I do that. You wanted to talk? Yeah. So I talked. That's the whole purpose. That's, that's the origin. I don't need to go into it f for you, but there are people in chat who have absolutely heard this story. I've told it maybe twice, maybe three times. But that is how the birth of it is, is somebody randomly coming in, <laughs> XT minus, um, randomly coming in before this even existed, before Proudly Radical existed, before this fucking coming to a thing I was doing and making a comment in chat and me replying with a question and her replying with basically an, well, isn't that she, it was about Bernie Sanders. And I said, well, what's your problem with Bernie Sanders? She said, isn't he a socialist? And I said, even if he was, is that bad? And she said, I don't know. And I said, why don't you come on air with me and let's have a conversation. Right. Like, this is a person who thinks Bernie Sanders is a socialist and socialism is bad, but doesn't know what socialism is. Clearly, this is a person who needs a conversation. This is a person who needs an education on this matter. And I have this information. I have this knowledge. So it would be neglectful of me to not share it. <laughs> and it was in that moment I realized exactly what I was supposed to be doing why I, what I needed to do and how I needed to do it. And what I do is very niche. I will never have like, you know, the, the appeal of other, other streamers. So what we do most days when chat is behaving, um, I, I really do feel bad that you came in on that. It is a rare occasion. Um, but most days what we do is we watch some shit. We laugh about some shit. I tell depraved stories from my, you know, ne'er do well, past we we talk we discuss topics we go back and forth we'll watch documentaries and somebody will have a question either from in community or somebody will come in and they'll want to know more and we'll get into a good good faith conversation and maybe they come on air maybe a fascist comes in and starts advocating for monarchism in a modern sense and you're like well you're fucking crazy let's let's fucking talk to you right like this is batshit insane advocating for a king in 2024 that's probably a good conversation let's talk to you <laughs> right you're a curious young person uh, uh, and you wanted to know more about anarchism that's a good conversation let's have it so yeah the reason right. the reason i talk to you is because that's quite literally what uh what i do yeah, I get 
kind of used to parasocial relationships because we consume media en masse. It's different. Thank you. Thanks, though. You're welcome. I think it's good. <laughs> it's, it's what I've found is the only effective manner to actually do anything. Um, no amount of video essays, no amount of flashy YouTube edits, no amount of shorts, no amount of blah, 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 really will ever do the thing that I have come to understand needs doing. I can't make a video to answer your question or answer your questions, right? What, what are the chances that I could have constructed a YouTube video that would have been able to dynamically address what you wanted me to address? It's, it's just none, none. There's no fucking chance in hell I can construct that. So ultimately what I realized is I need to be able to have conversations. I need to be able to talk to people, whether it's three people in chat simultaneously that I'm, I'm bouncing around or whether it's a person who gets my undivided attention on air. Ultimately, I'm going to have to engage in a Socratic methodology, ask questions, utilize my rhetoric, use my experiences in order, uh, order and just do the thing and one by one I give people ideas yeah so. this might come off as a bit uh, fan-ish but it genuinely is there a way that an individual could help like what you're doing like either spreading it around or no um, i don't know yes no. there is one thing you can do you can participate we have a discord server you're a member of it you've been to the channel i stream regularly participate ask questions contribute information share knowledge Absorb knowledge. Yeah. You want to, you want to, you want to, you want to enhance this somehow? Become a part of it. That's it. Right. Uh, yeah, thanks. Um, I'll definitely stick around, probably come back with more. I don't know. I do like the theoretical questions to, more because I don't know my own answers to them half the time. So we, um, I'll be back. We have we're, like later tonight, we'll be doing bad movie night after stream. Actually, fucking man stream here after our conversation. We'll be doing bad movie night on the Discord server. You're more than welcome to join us. We'll hang out in VC, a bunch of us, and watch a shitty movie and crap on it. Um, but there's people in VC fairly regularly feel free to pop into vc if you see people in there talk if there's a t read the room maybe they're talking about something maybe somebody's open to questions there's channels ask questions talk in the comments ask questions in chat whatever yeah all right participate all right yeah if if that's all the case uh aha, i got paid today nerd um, I mean that, that is, uh, thank you. It's more self-serving than anything that way you just, you know, if you don't have the uh, <clears throat> ability to, at least now you won't see bullshit ads. So. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I understand that one. Um, all right. Well, you know, yeah, I'll, if you want to, like I said, we'll be in VC for bad movie night. So if you want to join us, I'll see you there. Yeah, Absolutely. All right, man. Nice meeting you.